Good evening all and welcome to this evening's full council meeting. I'm Councillor Maureen Cregan, Mayor of Warrington, and I will be chairing the, this meeting. Oh, Before I start my initial comments, could you all mute, mute your microphones or phones until you are asked to speak? In order to mute yourself, please press six. When you are invited to speak, please unmute by pressing six again and turn your camera on. Due to the current coronavirus pandemic, the Council have taken steps to follow restrictions and health guidance in relation to self-isolation and social distancing whilst fulfilling our duties as a Council. The meeting is being broadcast live to the public in line with the requirements of the Coronavirus Act 2020, Section 78. I will now call each councillor's name alphabetically to determine if they are present and I will state if they have sent apologies. I, um, yes, I will start now. Thank you. Uh, councillor Abbey? Present. Councillor Axel? Present. Councillor Barr? Present. Councillor Bate? Present. Councillor Bigging? No. Councillor Bowden? Present. Councillor Buckley? Present. Councillor Carey? Present. Councillor Carter? Present. Councillor Cooksey? Myself, who's present? Councillor Davidson? Councillor Deera? Present. Councillor Fellows? Present. Councillor Fitzsimmons? Present. Councillor Flarty? Present. Councillor Fradley? Councillor Friend. Present. Councillor G Friend. Present. Councillor Froggett? Present. Councillor Grimes? Present. Councillor Guthrie? Present. Councillor Hall? Present. Councillor Hannon? Mike? Present. Present. Councillor Harris? Present. Councillor Hart is apologies for Councillor Hart. Uh, Councillor Higgins? Present. Councillor Hill? Present. Councillor Jennings? Present. Councillor Johnson? Present. Councillor Keane? Present. Councillor Kerr Brown? Present. Councillor King has given her apologies. Councillor Knowles? Present. Councillor Krisniak? Councillor Ma? B. Ma? Councillor Marks? Present. Councillor McCarthy? Councillor McLaughlin? Present. Councillor Mitchell? Present. Councillor Morgan? Present. Councillor Morris? Councillor Morris, no. Councillor H. Mundi Mundry? Present. And Councillor K. Mundry? Present. Councillor Parrish? Present. Councillor Patel? Councillor Price? Present. Councillor Purnell? Councillor Smith? Present. Councillor Tarr? Present. Councillor Walker? Here. Councillor Warburton? Present. Councillor Wellborn? Present. Councillor Wheeler? Present. Councillor Pat Wright? And Councillor Wright? And Councillor Steve Wright. Present. Thank you for that. Uh, apologies have been received uh, from Councillor Morris, um, from Tony Williams, from Jan Hart and Amanda King. Uh, the minutes of the Council, which is item two. I will move the minutes of the council meeting held on Monday, the 7th of no December 2020,
with the inclusion of Councillor Morris on the list of attendees. Does any member have any other matter of accuracy they wish to raise? Please indicate now. No, thank you. Can, I, can the Deputy Mayor second, please? I second the minutes, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I will take that as all members are voting in support of the minutes. Thank you. Item three, correspondence from previous meetings. I don't think we have any correspondence, no. Uh, item four is code of conduct. Declarations of interest, relevant authorities, disposable pecuniary interest regulations 2012. Do members wish to make any declarations of interest? Councillor Keane, you declared an interest last year as Cheshire Police and Crime Commissioner. I assume you wish to do the same this year and not take part in the discussion or the vote. Uh, any yes, other please. members? Is that correct, Councillor Keane? Uh, yes, it is, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Keane. Are there any other members? No? Item five, to receive the reports from the Cabinet and the Council's committees. Item 5.1, 2021 to 2022, Treasury Management Strategy. Councillor Fitzsimmons, can you propose the report and Councillor Froggart, can you second it, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that the Council adopts and approves the Treasury Management Strategy for 2021-2022. stroke And I second that, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillors. Do any members wish to speak to the report? Please indicate now. No. Right. The Chief Executive... Will We'll now take the vote. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, so it's four against to abstain, members, please. Councillor Abbey? Four. Councillor Axel? Four. Councillor Bart? Four. Councillor Bate? Four. Councillor Biggin? Councillor Bowden? Four. Councillor Buckley? Against. Councillor Carey? Four. Councillor Carter? Councillor Cooksey? Four. Councillor Cregan? Four. Councillor Davidson? Councillor Dereer? Four. Councillor Fellows? Against. Councillor Fitzsimmons? Four. Councillor Farty? Four. Councillor Fragley? That's a Diane friend. Four. That's a Graham friend. Four. Four. That's a Froggart. Four. That's a Grime. Four. That's a Guthrie. Four. That's a Hall. Four. That's a Hannon. Four. That's a Harris. Four. That's a Higgins. Four. That's a Hill. Four. Councillor Jennings. Four. Councillor Johnson. Four. Councillor Keane. Staying. Councillor Kerr Brown. Four. Councillor Knowles. Four. Councillor Kuzinak. Councillor Mark. Councillor Marks. Four. Councillor McCarthy. Councillor McLaughlin. Four. Councillor Mitchell. Four. Councillor Morgan. Four. Councillor Morris. Councillor Hans Mundry. Four. Councillor Karen Mundry. Four. Councillor Parrish. Four. Can I point out, Mr Broomhead, that uh, both councillors Marr and Purnell have dispensation on the grounds of ill health? Thank you, Stephen. Councillor Patel. Councillor Price. Four. Councillor Pennell. 
Councillor Smith. Four. Councillor Tart. Four. Councillor Walker. Four. Councillor Warburton. Four. Councillor Wellborn. Four. Councillor Wheeler. Four. Councillor Williams, apologies. Councillor Stephen Wright. Four. Thank you, members. I declare the report uh, carried. Uh, we now go to item 5.2, 2021 straight 2022, medium term financial plan, revenue budget and capital programme. Due to the nature of the business, I am allowing certain speakers a longer period than normal. Councillor Mitchell, you will be, be allowed 30 yeah. minutes and a representative from the Liberal Democrat group, 10 minutes. All of the speakers will be allowed the usual five minutes. I am proposing that questions to Councillor Mitchell be kept to around 30 minutes if this is acceptable. Councillor Mitchell, please propose the budget and capital programme on behalf of the administration and Councillor Fitzsimmons to second, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I propose this report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I second the report and reserve the right to speak. Thank you. And Councillor Mitchell, please present the budget. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I want to start off this budget speech by reflecting on what we stand for as a Labour administration. Why have we taken this approach and what are we hoping to achieve? We are about people, communities, families and supporting local businesses. We are working to ensure that people in Warrington live happy, healthy and independent lives. We aim for everyone to benefit from our thriving economy. This will never have been more important than when we come out of this COVID pandemic. We want safe and strong communities crisis has shown the strength and the resilience of communities across Warrington. We must build on that. We also recognise the importance of climate change and have already made a strong start on making Warrington a clean, green and more vibrant town. <laughs> Covid has also amplified the healthcare and income inequalities that previously existed. And addressing this is one of the major concerns of our plan for action. There is so much more to do. So what have we achieved? Well, here are a few key examples. The Youth Zone. After a five year fundraising campaign, work has now started on this ambitious project to provide a facility that's accessible to all of Warrington's young people that's fit for the future. Times Square in the market. This fantastic regeneration project is now complete and the multi award winning market is proving to be incredibly popular. The Edge of Care Outreach Hub, offering support to troubled families to prevent the breakdown of relationships between young people and parents or carers and preventing children coming into care. The council has also set up its own housing company, Incrementum, to build modern, efficient, energy efficient homes for families in Warrington on brownfield sites that belong to the council. Not all achievements are on this scale, but they're just as important. Let me give you an example of that. I want to tell you about a young girl that our staff told me about who's 16 years old. She came to our attention after she'd attempted suicide twice and was in hospital. One of our social workers was assigned to support her. At first, she wouldn't share her feelings and she often missed sessions. It turned out that she was brilliant at art and especially graphic design. Our social worker used that to communicate about mental health and finally discovered that she'd suffered sexual harassment and experienced racism at school. So lots of work was done to build up her confidence and self-esteem. She's now involved with a group called Empower, 
which celebrates people from black, Asian and ethnic minority backgrounds. And she supports other young people. She's much happier at school and spending more time with her family. Successful and ambitious town. The council works hard to ensure that it's a great place to be born and to grow old in. During COVID, we've strengthened our partnership working, particularly with the NHS and the voluntary sector, and we intend to maintain and develop this. The council has been a very difficult one, though, particularly since 2010. Councils across the country have lost 60 pence in the pound due to cuts in their funding from the Conservative government under the policy of austerity. Economists and even the Office for Budget Responsibility reflect that austerity had a negative impact on economic growth and is largely regarded as a failure. For councils, austerity is not over. We entered COVID significantly weakened by the impact of austerity. When the Conservative and Liberal Democrat coalition government began to make severe cuts to council funding back in 2010, the then local government minister, Eric Pickles, advised councils that they would need to become more commercial, enterprising and run down their reserves. Warrington had, and still has, one of the lowest council tax rates in the North West. This was set by politicians at the time that Warrington became a unitary council back in 1998, and it's a legacy from the days of the old Cheshire County Council. It stayed low because council tax has been capped ever since, so we can't catch up. Coupled with this, the government has treated Warrington as a wealthy area and we've received less funding, although we do have areas of deep deprivation. Social inequality stubbornly remains, but our better funded neighbours are much better resourced to address it. This all adds up to Warrington being one of the most poorly funded councils in the country, and that's before austerity commenced. All we ask for is fairness in funding. Whilst there may be a road to freedom from COVID, we need a motorway to fairness in the funding of councils. Since 2010, we've lost over £1,800 per household in funding. Council tax used to make up 25% of our funding. Now it's 72%. The money we receive from council tax does not grow in relation to the increasing demand for services for children in need and adult social care that the council provides. So what could the council do? There's basically two options. You could pass on the cuts to our community, significantly reduce or cancel all services that people need. Wouldn't be our fault. We could point the finger at the Conservative government, which has cut the funding for the past 11 years. The only alternative was to find a way of increasing our income. And this is what we did. And by doing this, we've tried our best to keep services going. We believe in public services. The Conservatives don't. Make no mistake, the continuing cuts to, cuts to funding for local councils such as ours are cuts to funding for the community. These are our parks, our libraries, our bin collections, our streets and caring for our loved ones. There's a lot of rhetoric about levelling up. All we ask of government is to give this council a leg up with regard to its funding position. Adult social care and children's services account for around 70% of our budget. <laughs> These are the invisible services, but they are so important. This is when the council steps in when you need it most such as an older person I was told about who's suffering from schizophrenia. He was a regular attender at a day centre. He was supported by his wife, who was also his carer, 
and also managed all of the family affairs. Sadly, she passed away and basically his world fell apart. He was overwhelmed by grief and wanted to leave the house where his wife had died. Our outreach team were there for him. They helped him to get a new home, sorted out his benefits for him and got all of his bills onto direct debit. And then they liaise with the day centre who have continued to support him. When the Prime Minister was elected, he solemnly promised to sort out the funding of adult social care. We are still waiting. Mind you, Theresa May also promised to sort it out, but look how well that went. The government recently announced desperately needed extra funding for adult social care, but then told us that most of it would come from council tax, passed on to our hard pressed community and local taxpayers. The government decided that council tax would go up. It was included in the money that they announced. So how did we increase our income in order to maintain services? and to attempt to balance our budget. We've borrowed money to invest in projects that generate an income. We choose investments that benefit the community, such as regeneration. Most of our investments have been in bricks and mortar, which means that we can sell the building to repay the debt if that's the right thing to do. We can't use borrowed money to pay for services and we can't use money from selling an asset to pay for services either. That's the law. But we can use the income that the asset earns as additional revenue to fund services. So it's similar to a buy to let. For example, where someone might get a mortgage to buy a house and then rent it out. From the rent, you'd have to take out all the costs of borrowing the money, the cost of looking after the property. The money that's left over after you've done all that is the surplus. For the council, that net income can be spent directly on our services. We choose our investments very carefully with external advice and with considerable due diligence. Our investments are backed by assets, so you have something to sell at the end of the day to repay the borrowing. We've had case studies pu published by SIPFA and the LGA on our good practice in the area of due diligence. COVID has been a good stress test of our investments. The overall value of our commercial properties has increased. We paid 496 million originally, but the most recent valuation is over 500 million. Another market valuation is presently underway. We have 15 properties in Warrington and the North West. They bring in a gross income of over 30 million pounds. And when you've taken out all of the costs, that leaves almost 30 million pounds to be spent on services. In the last quarter of 2020, we managed to collect over 95% of rent on demand during COVID which external advisors have described as exceptionally high. One of the reasons these investments have held up so strongly is that we've focused on logistics and food retail, which have performed very well. We've avoided investing in high street retail and we avoid investments with very high returns as they carry the most risk. There's two points to make on risk. First of all, all investments carry risk, but some are less risky than others. If we didn't make investments and just cut services instead, there's risk with that too. Cutting services to the most vulnerable people in the town carries risk. One of the costs that comes out from the investment income is money which is put towards a council reserve just in case anything goes wrong. So the investments pay towards a reserve, a bit like an insurance policy in case there's a problem with any of the investments. This is a really important aspect of risk mitigation. I'm very pleased to report that nothing has been taken out so far as they've all done well. 
Since 2009, we've been successfully providing loans for social housing to registered social landlords, which gives us an income once all of the costs have been paid. The loans are secured on houses, so backed by assets once again. Most of the social landlords are housing associations based in Warrington and the North West. So our investment also helps to increase social housing in the area. And this type of social investment has yielded £6 million this financial year. Also invested in solar farms as part of our plan to tackle climate change. And they're a good investment too. They will save a million pounds per year on energy costs as the whole solar farm will supply all of the council's energy needs. For, ex for example, all the street lights and the electricity for council buildings. The Association for Public Service Excellence, APSI, described the investment as prudent, commercially viable and of high investment grade. The farms increased in value by nine million pounds since they were developed by the council. We expect a, re a return of 900,000 pounds this year. We really are leading the way here. We've also invested in Together Energy, which now supplies 100% green energy, provides an income for the council and also jobs for people in Warrington. 10 now and a further 10 after COVID restrictions are lifted. Through this company, we aim to tackle fuel poverty, starting with replacing pre prepayment meters with smart meters. It's a growing and successful business, also working to help our community. As a portfolio, our total investments increase our income by over 20 million pounds every year. That's the money left over once all of the costs of the investment are paid Money is set aside in a, res in, in a reserve in case anything goes wrong. So where are we at with the budget? Well, during this financial year, we've had an increase in need for services and the cost of services has gone up. The council has also lost income from its fees and charges as a lot of services have been cancelled or reduced. One example of this is par car parking charges. So our costs have gone up and our income's gone down. The government promised to reimburse councils for stepping up during the COVID crisis, but they haven't given it all back. So we could end this financial year with an overspend of four million pounds and that will have to come out of our reserves. The Revenue budget to pay for services for 21-22 is 161.8 million pounds and that includes 2.4 million for COVID. The funding we have available is 150.2 million pounds. So we're 11.6 million pounds short. Without our investment income, the shortfall would be at least 20 million pounds more. So any politician who says they wouldn't need to invest needs to tell you where the additional cuts would be made or where they would find that extra income. It's very important to be straight about this. The government has promised to review funding for local authorities and it's promised to look at how much of our business rate revenue we should keep. But both of these have been delayed again. Another example of decision inertia. We presently keep less than a third of the business rates we generate here in Warrington. We've tried not to make any unnecessary cuts, just in case things change for the better once the government finally gets round to getting these reviews done. We plan to fill the gap by enterprise, sensible investments to make a return and promote economic regeneration, developing our green energy pro proposals and building new homes through the council's housing company that will bring some money in. We also need to manage demand for council services, which is really difficult right now with the impact of COVID. We've also made some of our services digital in an effort to save money and to improve people's access. 
and we'll do much more in the next year. So, like most councils, council tax will increase by 1.98% plus 3% for the adult social care precept. That's the extra money that the government announced for adult social care, but is actually being paid for by the local taxpayer. And these increases will raise just over £5 million extra. One of the topics that comes up a lot is the council's debt position. Current council, sorry, the current debt of the council is £1.6 billion, which is a big number, but let's understand the figure. We make short term investments to make money on money that's just in the council's bank account, making little or no interest. So you need to take that out of it and that leaves the borrowing at 1.2 billion. Of that borrowing, 866.2 million pounds is our investment portfolio, which is all secured on assets which have increased in value. And if you've got the chart in front of you broken down, group entities include Birchwood Park and our solar farms. Then you have loans to housing associations. Then you've got the 15 investment properties, which I've already mentioned. These assets could be sold in a matter of month according to months, according to external advisors. Should it be prudent to do so? Because of course, if you sold them off, you'd lose the income that they generate. So the real council borrowing is 406.7 million, which includes a lot of historical debt for regeneration projects and includes Times Square, highways, Sankey Forum and parks. The cost of this debt is built into the council's budget. Council is in a better position than most because we've in increased our reserves. Whilst many councils have reduced their reserves over recent years, we've increased ours to stand at £84 million as of March 2020. Fund our capital programme over the next three years, we plan to borrow a further £700 million. This will be used to build new affordable homes via the council's housing company and to fund the youth zone highway maintenance, street lighting and housing association loans. The majority of that borrowing will increase the council's income when all the costs are taken out. Most of that borrowing will be the loans for housing associations, which may or may not be drawn down. They just get a facility that they can borrow a maximum and we have to account for that maximum. And of course, it's all asset backed on houses. Local government finance is at breaking point. At least 12 councils, councils in the country, led by all the different party leaderships, are in financial trouble. And SIPFA predict that that number will go up in 2021. Thanks to the enterprising approach taken by Warrington and the hard work of our staff and members, we are not in that category. The challenge remains high but it's a challenge we can meet. And on that basis, I commend this budget to you. The recommendations at paragraph 17 of the report, and I move that recommendation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Mitchell. Uh, questions only, please, to Councillor Mitchell at this stage, please. Members will be allowed a further opportunity to discuss this item. If there are several, I will take a couple of questions at a time to allow Councillor Mitchell to respond. Do we have any questions for Councillor Mitchell, please? Councillor Mitchell will please respond after the questions. Yes, Madam Mayor, Councillor Graham-Friend. Thank you, Councillor Graham-Friend. Would you uh, like to 
so give your uh, thoughts to Councillor Mitchell, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, when this Labour administration came to power in 2011, we were having to pay 7p in every pound in debt repayments. That was nearly 17, power, 17 million a year loss from our budget. How much are we paying now? Thank you, Councillor Friend. Uh, the numbers have gone down um, in 14 to 15, it was five pence in the pound, 15 to 16, four pence, 16 to seven, it was four pence, 17 to 18, it was four pence, 18 to 19, one pence in the pound, 19 to 20, it was naught pence in the pound, and presently 2021, we get four pence back. So we're actually increasing our, our revenue. Um, the reasons for that, councillor friend, are that the investments that we we've got a paying a bigger return than the cost of the borrowing and also we're taking advantage of low interest rates. That's the reason. So once upon a time when when the debt was just pure debt, it wasn't doing anything. It was just costing a lot of money to the council. But now with, with the investments that we've got, the borrowing actually brings us money back into the pot. Are you happy with that, Councillor Friend? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I do have a, a supplementary to that. Um, yes. Others have criticised our recent investments. Have they said to your knowledge, if, if they had not made these investments, what services they would cut to balance the budget? Councillor Friend, it might not surprise you to hear that they've been very quiet about what they would do if they didn't invest. It's very easy to criticise, as you know, but to give an alternative solution or say what you'd actually do, for some reason, our opposition have been very quiet about that, because if they did pay all the investments about which they could, they would be 20 million plus, there would be a 20 million plus black hole in the budget on top of the 11.6 I've already mentioned. So where would you cut? Well, you could reduce bin collections, libraries, you could reduce the care of open spaces and roads. That wouldn't give you enough savings though. So you'd have to look at making cuts to the adult social care and children's bu budget because that's 80, that's 70 percent of our budget. So support perhaps for support for children with special educational needs. You basically have to take services away from the most vulnerable people in the town, which is why we've stood up and we've done what we've done. Well, there's no other reason that we would make in these investments apart from to try to try our very best to protect our public services, which the Conservatives would clearly not care about cutting. Well, thank you, Lord Councillor Mitchell. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Brent. Uh, would any of the councillors like to speak, please? Yes, Madam Mayor. Yes. Can I ask a question? I'd just like to ask yes. the lead member how much the council has invested in improving our road surfaces since the last all out elections in 2016. Thank you, Councillor McLaughlin. Thanks, Councillor Mitchell. Would you like to speak? Certainly. Uh, on the highways investments that we've made over the last four years amount to £3.5 million, pounds, so almost a million pounds a year. Um, our council, our, our funding from government has been cut 20% from last year to help, so highways maintenance has been cut. Obviously, the, the Conservatives are making much of a £5.5 million announcement for potholes We've done the calculations, we've not had the figure in yet, but we, it looks like that will give us a, a full extra £27,000, which goes absolutely nowhere near to what they've cut. It's thanks to this council investing on roads that they're not in a worse position because it's certainly not from the government. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I don't have a supplementary question. Oh, thank you very much, Councillor uh, McLaughlin. Have we had any more questions for Councillor Mitchell, please? Is that a no? <laughs> Who's that? 
do we have one lighting up? No. All right. Thank you. Um, that concludes the question and answer session. Could I possibly go now to Councillor Ian Marks, who will now speak on behalf of the Liberal Democrats uh, for 10 minutes, please. Thank you very much. I will open the, time, the item up for debate. Um, Councillor Mitchell, you will have the right to reply. Thank you, Councillor Marks. OK, thank you, Madam Mayor. I will do my best for 10 minutes. Sure. Before preparing this speech, I looked at what I said last year. Apart from adding references to COVID, I could actually have repeated what I said then, because hardly anything has changed apart from the financial situation getting tighter. Now, Linton Green is reported as saying that setting the council budget this year is the most difficult he has faced, and I believe him. I would like to put on record our thanks to the officers for putting the budget together. Certainly not an easy task. Now, the country's economic backdrop is particularly grim. We're experiencing our greatest economic decline for 300 years, the biggest since the Great Frost of 1709. The Conservative government has presided over a bigger percentage fall in GDP last year than the USA, Japan and the Eurozone. And a poll of 90 economists predicted the return of our economy to its pre-pandemic level would lag behind our peers. Now, as one commentator said, the vaccines will provide a shot in the arm for the economy, but Brexit will be a shot in the foot. Now, thankfully, Warrington is in a better position than many other places to ride out the storm because of the strength and breadth of our economy. Nevertheless, many of the most vulnerable and those in insecure employment will be at particular risk with little or no savings to fall back on. The demand for parcels from the food bank, from local volunteers is growing and the recipients are becoming increasingly desperate. Now, austerity went on for far too long and has had a really serious impact on underlying council finances. Government has thrown money at councils, but not enough to cover the additional costs associated with COVID. Now, much of this, I have to say, is more to do with pork barrel politics. Now, anyone claiming that the council would be all right if it just improved efficiency is talking nonsense. Although, of course, there is always room to do things better and make savings. Now, the Chartered Institute of Public Finance boss, Rob Whiteman, claimed recently that at least 12 English councils are in discussion with the government about potential Section 114 declarations. Now, Warrington is not one of these, but there is no room for complacency. The Local Government Association has estimated that councils need a further £2.6 billion pounds this financial year to plug funding gaps caused by the pandemic. Yet in last year's budget, the Chancellor said he would fund, quote, whatever it costs, unquote. Covid has clearly demonstrated that successful outcomes are much more likely to come from local public services working together than from central government control. Now, let's look at some of the financial reforms promised by the government. Whatever happened to the Fair Funding Review? When will this restart? The Business Rates Review has been kicked down the road yet again. The Chancellor now says he will look at it in the autumn. And despite endless promises, we still have no plan for the proper funding of social care. All we get is a proposed power grab by the health secretary, perhaps taking over social care too, which would be a complete disaster. Now, we were promised multi-year financial settlements to enable proper planning to take place. Instead, we've just had the settlement for 2021-22, not for future years. Funding for early intervention in children's social care has been cut back. Prevention is much more cost effective than expensive interventions later on. And as we know, mental health and children's education have been big issues during the pandemic. Now, the LGO notes that the local authority public health spending is three or four times more cost effective in improving health outcomes than money spent on the NHS. Transferring public health back to councils has been a real success in recent years. If this was taken back into an even more centralised NHS, this would be a highly retrograde step. Well, I see it was in the news again today that might happen. Now, before I talk about some of the more controversial issues facing the council, I want to talk about the increase in council tax. Now, we support the increase of just under 5%. It's a tough decision when many of our residents have suffered significant financial hardship due to COVID. Yet not to do it puts even more pressure on vital services for next year and indeed every year in the future. 
it is especially galling for the, the government to give the impression they have given us an extra 3% to increase social care funding. Uh, it is nothing of the kind. All they've done is push the extra cost directly onto our council taxpayers, as we heard in the previous speech. Now, another problem for our less well-off families is the formula for calculating pupil, pupil premium. Now, pupil premium is a Liberal Democrat initiative that has worked well. We support the councils lobbying the government to change the base date to January 21 from October 20 to ensure the greatest number of children can benefit from this support. Now, we accept that the council has to be innovative in finding ways of generating income to pay for vital services. This has to be done to compensate for the fundamental lack of funding by central government. If the funding was there, commercial investment would not be necessary. Now, we accept that due diligence is carried out on individual investments, and we are pleased that a detailed action plan to look at governance associated with all the companies in which we have an interest has been agreed. And secondly, we welcome the intent to focus far more on ethical investing, that is environmental, social and governance issues when we make future investments. However, we would like more of the investments to be in the borough rather than elsewhere and provide a social benefit as well as an economic one. Now, by and large, we support investments that are local to Warrington, housing related, providing it's for affordable and social housing, related to energy saving schemes like our solar farms or support for regeneration. We are, however, concerned by the amount of money involved and also by exposure to risk, including interest rates or companies going bust in a post-COVID, post-Brexit world. Now, our debt is currently 1.3 billion, which is forecast to increase to 2.3 billion at the end of 23-24. Now, this is, if you do the arithmetic, this is more than 10,000 pounds per person in the town, which is an awful lot of money. Now, the specific investments I expressed concern about last year are still very much in the spotlight. Redwood Bank is at the heart of the reasons for our accounts for 2017-18 uh, and subsequent years not yet being signed off by the auditors. There are several other reasons too, and I have no idea when the sign-off will actually take place. But more fundamentally, we question if a council should be investing in a bank. And why does Hutt want to borrow money from us? This is an extremely profitable company which recently had a share launch and has done remarkably well. Together Energy is another controversial issue and we know that Nottingham, Bristol and Portsmouth councils have all had major problems with their investments in energy companies. Now we're told that energy, Together Energy is different but we remain unconvinced. Now this year we will have to dip into our reserves to balance the budget and next year we're proposing to take a further 3.5 million. Now this cannot go on forever. There was some criticism in the LGA peer review about our reserves policy, although I'm told by the administration that this criticism was unfair. Anyway, we are pleased that a fundamental review of our reserves policy is taking place. Now in the old days, the opposition would put forward a costed alternative budget with different spending and expenditure uh, and income options. Now, I'm not going to attempt to do this. The current administration has to be guided by our officers as the budget has become tighter with little or no room for discretion. But I will mention two areas which give rise to many complaints from residents. Unlike the high cost areas such as adult and children's social care, these are issues that are highly visible to many residents. Relatively inexpensive changes would demonstrate to the public that the council was listening to them. The first is gullies and drains. Too many of these are blocked with debris or leaves, giving rise to unnecessary flooding. The council should find better operational ways of fixing these. And secondly, something I've mentioned in the past, getting an annual green bin license. Older people have difficulties with the online system and the need to set up an account. There is no direct debit system, which I've previously been told will be investigated. There is also the discrimination caused by the extra charge if you don't renew online. Mind you, it's not that easy on the phone. A 90-year-old resident I'd heard of gave up after four times on hold for very long periods. And one of my fellow councillors then tried, but after 25 minutes and all of Vivaldi's four seasons also gave up. Now the capital budget. The figure for next year is 394 million. For 22 23, 309 million, but only 83 million for 23 24. Now, I realise that details of expenditure in the last year are not yet known, but surely a contingency of around 250 million should be added to the table. 
Finally, some questions. The local plan has been paused. What are the implications of this for the capital budget? In particular, is the council just as committed to the Western Link in a post-COVID world? And another hot potato, the traveller sites. 1.8 million is in for the coming year. The lack of a decision on a site has gone on long enough. When is the council going to grasp the nettle and actually make a decision on a site? So to conclude, there is major concern in the town about the council's finances. There needs to be a far better attempt to explain the situation. We have a major concern about the lack of important detail in the papers. It's not at all clear exactly what the savings specified are and what the implications for revised service delivery might be. It is for this reason that our group will be opposing the budget when it comes to the vote. And I think Councillor Barr will say more about this in a moment. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very Thank much, much Councillor Marks. Marks. Right. right. I will I now will open the item up for debate. Councillor Mitchell, you have the right to reply. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Just a few points, really. Uh, the forecast for the budget going forward in the next four years is based on a full um, full take up of the loans to the uh, housing associations. And if that happens, they'll be driving quite a lot of income into the council and fully secured on property. Um, also, most of the debt is fixed rate, so wouldn't be affected by interest rate movement. Um, the Together Energy, we're not running it, which unlike the other councils, so it's professionals with many years of experience in the energy industry, which is different from a council trying to run it. It's moved into profit for the first time. It's tackling fuel poverty, providing jobs, and it's growing and doing well. Uh, Redwood Bank was driven from a policy com committee as a way of supporting local businesses who couldn't bor borrow in a different way. Um, drainage. Uh, is, is raised and um, there's currently a full investigation underway at the cause of the flooding but gully cleaning is unlikely to be a significant factor when it happened there have been over three and a half inches of rain over 48 hours Sankey Brook reached the highest levels ever recorded uh, there was nowhere for the water to go and in most areas once the water had dropped the, the water drain once the levels had dropped the water drained away although there were some exceptions, especially in low lying areas. So yeah, we've had substantial cuts to our budget, uh, but the budget for gully cleaning has been the same for the last four years. Uh, just wanted to say that, uh, but we'll look at obviously the outcome of the invest investigation. The Hook Group is a loan facility that drives income. It's a commercial loan. And uh, I think that's everything. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Mitchell. Could I ask Councillor Barr if he would like to speak now, please? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you to Councillor Mitchell for her speech. Uh, Councillor Marks has outlined our overall view of the budget and has said that we'll not be voting for it. Our group has complained year by year that the budgets presented to this council are largely opaque. They're clearly written by officers for officers in order to deliver a legal budget and they achieved that. We're grateful to officers for all their efforts in this. However, there's ever less effort made by the leadership of the council and cabinet members to own, explain and justify the budget. Nice words in a budget speech on budget night are not enough. Consultation with business and the public is token and kept to an absolute legal minimum. These consultations are not reported in a way that includes members of the council in the debate. We're grateful for the briefing we had from Linton Green and we appreciate the effort the Council Mitchell made to attend. However, a one hour briefing before the budget book was published is no more than a token effort. And publishing the budget book uh, less than a week before the Budget Council is not very helpful. Mind you, the budget book itself is not very helpful. Excellent for officers, and excellent as a guide uh, to what the Council does, but absolutely useless for any real form of scrutiny. While there's much talk of difficult decisions, there's little detail of what those were and who took them. If cabinet members were involved in these decisions, they should have made themselves available to backbench members so that decisions could be scrutinised. None of this happens anymore. 
Instead, we keep getting the tired magic mantra of outcome based budgeting, which is increasingly meaningless when outcomes are neither defined nor monitored in any publicly acceptable or understandable way. While we're assured that the council has a good credit rating, the borrowing investment program is increasingly controversial. The auditors are concerned. The public is concerned. Even the cabinet members are concerned. In fact, they're so concerned that someone close to the cabinet or a cabinet member leaked confidential part two papers to the press, but has not yet been identified. We're being asked to own this budget as a full council by voting for it. Yet in truth, this is the officer's budget sanctioned by the leaders of the council and the cabinet. My group will not support it. The debt, the potentially difficult investments, the decisions as to which spending areas to cut belong to the leaders. They must take full responsibility for them. I'd ask every member of the council who does not in full conscience feel that they have been fully informed to understand the decisions the council is making and the risks it is taking to vote against this budget tonight, or at least to abstain from supporting it. My group will vote against this largely opaque budget. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Barr. Have we, um, is that all members or is there somebody who else, somebody else who wishes to speak on this? No more? Right. Members, we will be aware that there is a legal requirement to undertake a recorded vote in connection with the budget. Please note the recommendations on pages 49 to 50 on your agenda pack. I will ask the Chief Executive to do this. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, for against or abstain members. So, Councillor Abbey? For Councillor Axel? Against. Councillor Bart? Against. Councillor Bate? Against. Councillor Biggin? Councillor Bowden? Against. Against. Councillor Biggin Council against. Councillor Bowden? Uh, Bowden? Yeah, four. That clearly wasn't me saying against, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Buckley? Sorry about against. that. Against. Councillor Carey? Or Councillor Carter. Four. Councillor Cooksey. Four. Councillor Cregan. Four. Councillor Davidson. Four. Councillor Drea. Four. Councillor Fellows. Against. Councillor Fitzsimmons. Four. Councillor Flaherty. Four. Councillor Freshley. Against. Councillor Diane Friend. Four. Councillor Graham Friend. Four. Councillor Froggart. Four. Councillor Grime. Four. Councillor Guthrie. Four. Councillor Hall. Four. Councillor Hannon. Councillor Harris. Against. Councillor Higgins. Four. Councillor Hill. Four. Councillor Jennings. Four. Councillor Johnson. Against. Councillor Keane, that's an abstention, David, is it? Councillor Kerr Brown. Four. Councillor King. So apologies. Councillor Knowles. Four. Councillor Krishna. Councillor Marks. Against. Councillor McCarthy. Councillor McLaughlin. Four. Councillor Mitchell. Four. <coughs> Councillor Les Morgan. Four. Councillor Morris. Councillor Hans Mundry. Four. Councillor Karen Mundry. <coughs> Councillor Parrish. Four. Councillor Patel. Four. Councillor Price. Four. Councillor Pennell. Sorry, apologies. Councillor Matt Smith. Four. Councillor Tart. Four. Councillor Walker. Against. Councillor Warburton. Four. Councillor Wellborn. Against. Councillor Wheeler. 
Against. Councillor, Councillor Steve Wright. For. Thank you, members. this recorded vote I would sorry do apologize I apologize there <laughs> with the vote. I declare the report carried thank you the meeting is now concluded thank you so much for attending please keep safe and keep well thank you Thanks, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Bye. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Bye. 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 Bye